the common misunderstanding is that, that, that it's more than being just tired. You know, it, if people could only grasp this, this analogy about the, the energy in the toe, you see, people might understand that when, I, when you tell them that, but they've got to really feel what that's like. And again, most people don't, uh, like I said, most people take it for granted where they're using energy. They don't realise they're using energy when, because so many things we do are automatic, aren't they? You know, like getting up now out of this seat and going to make a cup of tea, getting on the phone, getting on the computer. People just do most of those things automatically. Uh, but they all take energy. And if you haven't got it, <laughs> with, with, when you used up the big toes worth, that's it, you're finished. Other people, they might they might find it tiring to go and use the computer, or use go on the phone and make these phone calls to the different insurance companies and whatever. It all takes that energy. They might, but they but they they still get their energy back again, either quickly or again they're unconscious that their energy comes back. But with with the ME, it, it doesn't come back quickly. It comes back so slowly, really slowly. It comes back again. With some people with ME, it might come back a bit quicker, but it still only be about the big toes worth. Some people with ME, they don't even have the big toes worth, but they're the really unfortunate ones, of course. Uh, so that's one of the big misconceptions. So you can see how difficult it is to put that across because, yeah, that's, that's one thing. You get, you get really tired of having to explain that every time to people. Look, this is what it's like for me. The whole rigmarole, the analogy... No one does that, do they? No one goes through an analogy about themselves to everybody they meet. And that's what you'd have to do if you really wanted people to understand. Well, I'd say to to just really do your best, because it, you know, I don't blame people for being, because we're we're as human beings, we we I think we're all guilty of of taking things for granted, all sorts of things, and when we do that, problems can arise. So in this respect, if you've got someone in the family with ME, it's to just not take for granted. You know, when they, when they appear to be, you know, from your, your viewpoint, uh, functioning quite well and normal, <coughs> don't take it for granted that they are just totally normal and can just then suddenly do normal things and then sort of ask them to do something normal. Yeah, that, that's right. That's a common one, you know, like... You might be visiting a friend or something, and and they're putting you up, and they'll go, and they they can't they might have this expectation that you're visiting them and staying with them. Well, it'd be really kind of you to just mow the lawn or something for them. You see what I mean? That's a, sort of an example. They're taking it for granted that that you look all right. You come to visit. You're enjoying yourself, sitting around and talking, drinking. Why not mow the lawn for me? I'm putting you up, feeding you. You see, and because uh, if you take take it for granted that that they they can do that, and then they don't do it, or they won't, they don't volunteer for it, or even if you ask them and they sort of say they can't, you you'll get upset with them. You know that they you see you see what I'm getting at here. You know they just they get, some people with ME might be able to mow you along, but you know so many just won't be able to, and it's like it is wrong to ask them because they've only got that little bit of energy to play with and they're using that energy to talk to you and enjoy the time with you and that's it. Um, then they've got to replenish with that, even social stuff. I will possibly only reiterate what is, all, is already said in the ME circles. The main thing is, <clears throat> and you have to really, well, yeah, because you have to really work at it, actually. And I think, again, my Tai Chi is has helped me to do this with, with no problem. When, when, you, when, when I went to this specialist for the first time and he interviewed me, then after, after that stage, they then kind of hand you over to the occupational therapist and the occupational therapist does, says their thing and gives you what, off, what they can offer. And it's more, more or less what they offered me is more or less what I already knew. And one, one of them is at the top of the list is this thing called pacing and how you have to pace yourself, and you have to find that pace which is right for you. It's paramount, it's really, really important. And you, you, you have to really focus on that, 
and not allow anybody else, no matter who it is, your own doctor, your own, your own family especially, to, to, to knock you out of that pace that you have to find for yourself. And that's the only way you, you'll be able to get on. So um, from that perspective, the, the new thing that's coming out of the government, which is causing terrible horror amongst um, disabled people and, and this austerity thing from the government, <coughs> if they start hitting you know, people with ME, it's going to cause terrible, terrible repercussions because that will really affect the pacing factor you, know, you can't make a person with ME do the nine to five thing. You just cannot do it. It's absolutely impossible. If you want a person with ME to work, one, it has to be someone ME with down the lower end who's still able to do certain things. But even them, you cannot make them do the nine to five. If you want to make them work, it will have to be in the pacing degree that they can do it. And how many employers would, would let someone do that? It, at best it would have to be someone self-employed who's got like really good staff to help them um, so pacing is really really important and and so therefore to, to educate that to get that out more in the open as well actually pacing to get it out into the general consciousness to all your loved ones get the message out really pump it into people's heads this thing about pacing your own pace that has to be accepted because from an esoteric point of view i think i think that is one of the, the, the because we we look at this sort of epidemic aspect of uh, sorry yeah the epidemic and esoteric aspect of me i think one of the purposes of it is that you know, it's making the general consciousness humanity to step back and, and look back and say look you, you, with people with this disease, you cannot force. You cannot force them to do. To, it, it's it, it's very similar to autism, right? And that, and that's an, another epidemic, isn't it? Aut there seems to be more and more children with born with autism, and they've learned, haven't they, that you cannot force someone with autism to learn this way, do things that way. They have to do. They, they're now learning. They're having to educate people that bring up people with autism, people with autism, has to learn all these different methods and different ways of making it all work where they can fit in with everybody and so on. And it's teaching people, it's teaching human, the human, the human factor, the human element, to be more tolerant, to be more loving. And, and that's one of the things that ME is doing as well. And, and, and again, with autism, it's more obvious because if you try and force someone with autism to do something they start sh screaming and shouting and hollering and so on and 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 you, you know you can't so you have to sort of hang on a minute but with me if you force someone to do something they'll just end up collapsing and but they go beyond doors and no one knows they've collapsed but nonetheless you cannot force them and and it is shown eventually what they're what, what you're doing to them and um so it's teaching a tolerance it's teaching a tolerance that one life is more look, there's more to life than nine to five full stop and and there's more to life than you know earn just earning a living and, and and nine to five and so on you know life is about oneness people getting on together people tolerating one another people help people realizing that we're all in this boat together if i'll give you an honest answer to that it's slow, very, very slow going. It's been taking years, you know. But it seems that there are medical people out there that are, what, like this Dr. Myhill, there are medical people out there that they must be very vocational people, proper vocational doctor, you know, that somehow chooses to want to, this area somehow stimulates them enough to want to work with it because it you know it must like i said it must scare the ego because there's little to work to work with and little answers come up but there's enough of them out there like dr myhill and there's i think there must be more out there who are starting to um 
work with it and find things and, and, and publish it and bring it out. But they, this Dr. Michael, this, this specialist I have, I mentioned, I mentioned her to him and he poo-pooed her immediately. He said, I, I don't believe in Dr. Myhill's work because she, he claims that she doesn't do it in a professional laboratory standard. But that's, that's poppycock, that's rubbish, she does. She, she, she uses all the right pro proper standards of, of, of doing it and so on. But for some reason, they, somehow these egos, they, they can't always get together and they sort of fight and squabble and so on. That's disappointing. But there's enough of them that, that are persevering, persevering and, and publishing stuff and so on. And fortunately, some people out there that are wanting to put their minds into helping. In fact, there's two charities I, I belong to. You know, you get inundated with all these charities. One is helping bears that in, in Asia, where in Chinese, traditionally, they... They stick catheters in these bears, full-size full bears, and they live in cages the size of the bear up until they're about 30 years of age just to extract their bile. So they use it, and they use it in this sort of ancient medicine. And, and, and her, medical herbalists as well as the allopathic medicine know that there's plenty of alternatives to bile, to bile medicine, you know. So you, these bears don't have to suffer in that way. Anyway, so that's one of my charities. And the other charity that I support is called the Dr. Hadwin Trust. And they, they that charity, is they, they, it's been going since the turn of the century and they're getting stronger and stronger and stronger. They're much bigger. Than that. They, just, they just opened their first charity shops now, Dr. Hadwin Trust. And they, what they do is that they... They work on all diseases of the human body, only in the laboratory. They, 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 no animal suffering whatsoever. None whatsoever. And it's just, you're talking about this now, I'm thinking, maybe I should write to them. Hey, you know, what about my disease, this disease that I have, very little help. Can you put some people onto this? I think what they seem to be doing lately is that they get graduate students and they with all their donations you know some people give thousands and whatever yeah, they're they're giving money to various graduate students to apply their principles as opposed to anim, animal experiments in the universities to work on diseases that are already now like cancer and kidney disease and whatever yeah. maybe i should write to them what do you think and say hey why not uh, get some of your students to work on this disease and say already you know, this is Dr. Maya Hill, this is what she's, she's been doing. And, and that's interesting actually because surely Dr. Maya Hill doesn't work on animals because how, how do you know if an animal has got ME? So surely they don't experiment on animals with ME, surely not. Surely it's all done in the laboratory. So maybe that's an interesting thing. I'm going to do this, this has triggered me, Reese. I think I'll write to them. And say, hey, why not look into this? They'll probably write back and say, resources, blah blah blah. And I say, okay, but come on, put it on the at least put it on your on your list because we need we need it desperately.